Galactic sentient broadcast. Target, planet Earth. Begin invasion in three, two, one. Greetings, invaders. My name is Scott. This is Book Invasion. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching. If you want some more good sci-fi book reviews, horror book reviews, and fantasy stuff, make sure you click on the subscribe button down below. So let's get into it. Today we're talking about Song for a New Day by Sarah Pinsker, which is the ultimate love letter to live music in a light dystopian sci-fi world. I guess you might be able to put it that way. Um, now, Sarah Pinsker is not a stranger to the sci-fi world, although this, this book did win the Nebula Award for, I think, Best Novel, and it was also a Locus Award nominee for Best First Novel. But Sarah Pinsker, she says she's been submitting to magazines and publications since age 14. Um, she's been published in things since 2012 in magazines like Lightspeed, Uncanny Magazine, and Asimov Science Fiction, and a bunch of other compilations, collections, and so on and so forth. So she's no stranger to the sci-fi realm. Now this book is, is light on the sci-fi. There's no spaceship battles, yada yada. It's, it's light on the post-apocalyptic. Now this story takes place in a pandemic, uh, post, pre and post, uh, which is a great story for the time of, of COVID-19, is there's been an outbreak, a pandemic of this kind of pox virus, and there's been uh, terrorist attacks happening. So we're totally in a lockdown mode. Uh, any gathering over like 30 or more people is illegal and everybody's had stay-at-home orders. Retail shops have kind of shut down and closed. Businesses are, are dwindling. And there's this place called Super Wally, which is one of our characters works for, that kind of evolves in the post-pandemic, which is called the after. And obviously the before, the quote before, is before this outbreak happened. So Super Wally kind of bubbles up and becomes this mega corp, and everything you order from there gets drone delivered and, and yada yada. And in this world too, um, in the after, where our character Rosemary kind of grows up, uh, when she was little, she she was in the before, and she hears stories from her parents. She kind of remembers her childhood uh, about what it was like before, but she's kind of now working and grown up and going to school in in the after which means she goes into hood space and hood space is kind of this virtual thing where you get avatars and you do your job and you go to school. And that kind of reminded me just like ready player one, like the Oasis, you kind of plug in and go to work, but you're really just always socially isolated with human to human interaction really kind of struck home. Like, yes, this is where we're headed. Essentially. This is what, what's going to happen. Like my kids are going to be going to school virtually you know, throw on a headset, an Oculus Rift or something like that, and then you're in school. Is that what it's going to be like for them growing up? So so the sci-fi part of this is a little is light, and the post-apocalyptic dystopian thing is light. It, it, it's, it's more of a story about the, the now and what comes kind of after this. Regardless of that, the story is also a great love letter, essentially, to live music, to playing music, to creating things, making them your own. The author, Sarah Pinsker, is also a musician. She's toured full-time and, and written music. Um, she has music on her website and things like that. And there's also, she's curated, obviously, a playlist for the book um, of different bands that she enjoys that go along with the chapter titles in the book as well. I'll put a link to the Spotify playlist down below. So what's this about anyway? What's this whole story about? Let's get into that. Um, I'll read a quick blurb. In this captivating science fiction novel from award-winning author, public gatherings are illegal, making concerts impossible, except for those willing to break the law for the love of music and for one chance at human connection. So yeah, so in this stay-at-home order, social gatherings and people collecting in one place is illegal. However, there's this, this scene of underground clubs that you kind of get to know by by code word or by name that you can still go see a live show if you know who to talk to and you know the the, the questions to ask and so on and so forth so there's, there's a whole underground kind of happening of live music in people's basements in like um, old barns and things like that you just got to know who to talk to and be willing to risk being busted by the police if they see um, a lot of gatherings via drones or whatnot so the musician in the story, her name is Luce, and she exists kind of in the before, and she's playing music, and she has a good band, and she's making a name for herself. And then the pandemic hits, and now she's kind of transitioned to the after, 
and thrown into this world of these underground shows. Her story is about kind of staying true to yourself, being that voice for the unspoken and, and having that creative drive, which can then spread to others and kind of encourage others to, to be a part of that and create their own thing as well. And that was a really cool thing. You could tell it's written from a, kind of a musician's perspective because not only are they have passion for the music, but they have passion to spread the music and inspire others to create music. And then the other character on this is, is Rosemary. And like I said, she existed as a young kid in the before, but then she kind of became adolescence and adulthood in the after where she doesn't have all that experience of going to shows and that social interaction. She's locked up at home, plugged into her job via hood space. And hood space is where you put on these, these hoodies, I guess they're called, and you log in to do your job. So she's kind of the small town girl who inadvertently gets a job for this big company that sends her on a, a musician and a band scouting job, which is kind of where the story takes off. Now this is very much a character kind of focused book. There's not a lot of ups and downs in the action or the plots. It's about the uh, Rosemary and Luce and their kind of connections. Um, it's It's got a bit of a, you know, take down the man vibe a little bit on uh, overthrowing this megacorp, but not to the super extent that it crumbles to the ground. It's just kind of a socket to the man kind of thing. And the the, I think the best parts of the book are having the characters experience just the live music effect and how much passion one can have in their creation. And it's really a love letter to the live music scene that's on the verge of dying and, and plugging into something and doing these virtual concerts just really isn't the same. And I know that's not extremely deep on a philosophical level, but there are underlying themes here of that you know, be your own person, create your own thing. Um, don't let fear shut that part of you down. Like always be creating and make your own mark, carve your name into something, pick up a musical instrument and create. So that was kind of this whole thing wrapped up in a, in a bow. If you're looking for something that's gonna kind of inspire you and also if you have a love of music, live music, if you're a musician yourself, you this book will hit all of those kind of notes for you. If you're looking for something that's space battles and sci-fi and, and time jumping and uh, portals and whatever, this, this isn't that kind of book. This is more kind of a character-driven story of um, just a journey of self-discovery in some aspects. It doesn't get technical on anything. It's all just, this is the future. This is kind of what you're going to be growing up in, what your children's children are going to be growing up in. So let's talk about it now and let's get it into our systems this would be the book to kind of get that for you it's more of let's have a an exp a shared public experience between us and no one should forget the power of that and we should all kind of come together to keep that and preserve that in the future um, but without risking lives and sicknesses and terrorists and pandemics. So needless to say, I really enjoyed the story. It's not a really hard sci-fi kind of read. It's really relatable to the characters, especially if you're in the music scene. If you're a music fan, go ahead and check it out. But yeah, this book was really great. I see kind of why it won some awards. It's a bit different, but yet not too different to push the boundaries of, of something people don't want to read. It's really enjoyable. It's really great. And it really encourages you to kind of go in and create your own path, create something, pick up an instrument, learn something. Uh, and I think that's really great to encourage. So those are all my thoughts on Song for a New Day by Sarah Pinsker. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.